Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it's my great honor uh, to join this meeting. And uh, also, I'm a little nervous because, you know, uh, I was used to studying American for several years. And uh, when I back to China, I start my own business for, uh, like, right now it's sec five, six years. And I seldom use English, so just uh, forgive me my some spelling mistakes. And uh, my name is uh, Dai Yi, and you can call me Danny as you wish. And uh, my company is focused on the robotics technology. And uh, <clears throat> it's my first time to discuss this technology uh, in a high school. So let's get started. <clears throat> uh, my presentation contains uh, three parts. The first is, uh, uh, this is a complicated word, just I want to change it to easy way. So how to start a business? Oh, uh, you guys are high school students or some of the students. So do you want to start your own business in the future days? And uh, what do you need to concern for these decisions? <clears throat> so. If we want to start the business, the first things I want to talk about is be a boss and work for other people is totally different life. Totally different life experience. The first is that, you know, everybody in China especially, the house is very important in our, <coughs> uh, for the Chinese people. And if you work for others, you may have your own house. Maybe in five or five, ten years, if your family can support some money for you. But if, if you choose to start your own business, I think for a very long time, until your business is very successful, you need to rent a house. And second, if you work for others, I bet, uh, in my opinion, that you just need to focus on one field and dig the field as deep as possible as you can. But if you start your own business, <coughs> you need to know a lot of things. You need to know financial things, management, <coughs> people's relationship, yeah, HR job, and uh, sometimes you need to focus on the research, R&D, and uh, manufacture, all kinds of things. Also, if you work for others, you just need to focus on your boss. So this is the only guy you need to care about. But if you start your own business, you need to have contact with uh, normally everybody, all kinds of body. Government people, tax people, lawyer, banker, investors, all your own stuff. They may make a lot of trouble. And then you need to uh, get it done. Everything you need to focus on. Like me, I don't like to deal with a lot of people. But because I start my own business, these things push me to meet all kinds of people every day, every night. And need, I need to concern a lot of things. So if you know the social guys, or when you go into the, uh, have you bachelor, undergrad, undergraduate study in the university, you found that you are not a party lover. You may not want to choose to start your own business. <laughs> but there is some case that is uh, special. And also, you know, working and uh, vacation or, or just uh, to around the world is fancy to everybody. We all love travel. A lot of people love traveling all around the world. And uh, when I was in the United States, I travel, I think it's like 35 to 36 different states and all kinds of city. I, I, I normally travel all around the American, South American, Australia, a lot of country. But when I back to China, um, I go abroad just for working, no vacation. So this is the things that you, you guys need to concern. <coughs> and. Uh, this is very normal in Shenzhen, this extraordinary and fancy city. I know, I know Shenzhen is very successful in the 
whole history of the human beings. It's very special. This city is very special. But you know, every startup company, all very successful company like Tencent, Huawei, this kind of company, the boss is also 24 hours, seven days, and 365 days a year. They don't have any holiday, vacation, or spend some time with their families. I can give you an example because our investor have a <coughs> ERD companies, high level <coughs> people. They just uh, they have a vacation, you know, vacation plan. And uh, there's the president of the, this company is uh, Mr. Wang, and uh, he just uh, have a vacation in Italy, Italy, and I think he's just stay there for one day or two day and then come back to China because you know if you work is so nervous and everybody you just have a very big stress then you go to a very leisure place that you cannot comfortable with that and you have to back to Shenzhen so this is a this is the people we are doing this kind of work <coughs> also the last thing is very important everybody the family is very important but in some case that if you want to you company in in this world is successful or in the field that you want to be the top company you may balance these two things the working and the family I think if you know a Superman you may not balance these two things I can give you an example there is a map on the internet that shows that you know in re in recent years, after maybe 1979, after chi Chinese market is open, we calculate that in China, the company's life is only last average is 2.5 years. <coughs> and also there is a list. If a guy sell his house and start his own business, this list, you know, is the first one on the black sheep list. <coughs> very interesting but there is some good news that after 2015 <coughs> the Chinese Prime Minister Li so that <coughs> we need to have some policy to support the self-business and the government presents a lot of business uh, policy to want made in China products more powerful. So from the several government policy, <coughs> the Chinese, Chinese manufacturer business is booming, especially the robot business. A lot of people is trying to do some robot things or want to catch up the opportunity to earn some money, booming very fast. So next step is I will want to I want to discuss with you about the robotics test, especially if in the future you want to start your own business in this field. So what should we do and what should we concern about? <coughs> so <coughs> the robot definition is a, a robot need to concern of the action perception and cognition first you need to make it move and then you need to have a software and hardware to control him control the robot how to move and the final thing is that he has his open mind to do some decision <coughs> um, that sorry that imagine is the Boston Dynamic Products Atlas, and it's a human being shape robot. It's doing some military job. <coughs> so, what's the technical characteristics of the robot? First is the intelligence technology. <coughs> this is a very important technology of the robot system. It have a self identification, a judgment. <clears throat> and uh, also, you need to have a comprehensive technology, because the robot is on. You you don't need to only have some like I'm a hardware engineer. 
I just uh, know some hardware. No, it's not okay. You need to know the structure, hardware, embedded software, and PC software, and maybe some algorithm, and then you can make this whole system to work. So you need to focus on different major. So you, you need to have a comprehensive technology to do these things. And uh, the third thing is that the robot is focused on the real-time technology. Like right now, we have a 5G. The speed is fast, the internet speed is fast. In some case, the communication in robot system, we, we need to have a zero delay. So <clears throat> you need to have some real-time technology to develop this kind of things. And also, the final thing you need to concern about the interactive technology how to connect the robot with the human beings. And what's the future of the robotics technology? I think right, uh, I just uh, showed to you that right now we don't need to focus you know, a lot if you want to do these things, focus a lot of, of the uh, very high level software, like the artificial intelligence, maybe some the imaging algorithm or some of the other things. You need to focus on the basic of the robots, like how how can you robots or how can your products move the motion, yeah, the move method, and then you need to focus on the hardware, yeah, how software, embedded software, PC software, how to make these systems stable, as stable as they can, so they can you can sell your products or let your robots enter your customer's market, and your customer can use it. So this is a basic need. Right now, I think the robot industry, we need to focus on the basic need of this area. And maybe after a couple of years ago, or right, uh, and now there's a lot of companies is still doing this, is still doing these things. But I think it's not, right now it's not a very good time to uh, focus if you want to start your business now, it's not a very good time to focus a lot on the AI technology plus robot together because it will have a very long time to make your money back and you have to sell your products to get the money back. But in the future, it's, I think it's the most important technology in the future, in the very near future. <coughs> uh, I show uh, AlphaGo, it's a Google company's products. Uh, this is not a product, this is just uh, imagine. And uh, actually the AlphaGo is running on the server, running on the server, running on the computer. The, it's just uh, some algorithm, yeah, just some software. And, but the software can learn from China, uh, uh, can learn from human beings, can learn what you thought, and uh, he can decide what you move next step, and uh, how can I move better to to defeat our human beings. So this is our goal. Uh, there's one more question, that's if you are a high school student or junior student, what should you learn? I think the structural design, or hardware design, or software design, this is a very specific area. And uh, like in Shenzhen or Shanghai, this kind of city, or uh, San Francisco, there is a lot of engineer guys do these jobs. But the algorithm, the intelligence algorithm, you may have, you can put more emphasis in this area. So this is a future, future technology. But if you are adults like me, okay, then the artificial intelligence may not be the best point to, you know, to use in your technology or using your products because the technology is not very for me, uh, well, not. Uh, very good to use. So you need to focus on the basic one. You need to focus on the structural design. Yeah, you need to focus on the hardware, software. So this is a difference. Uh, I just talked a little about us. We, we are doing the underground facility detection robots. So basically it's a specialized robot. We focus on the environment, the water, and this kind of robot is using underground, so it must be very stable. Like to detect some factory, maybe have some sewer, have some dirty water, just uh, pushing them into the rain, rain pipe. So we'll cause the uh, ocean or cause the lake. 
very dirty. So this is the underwater ground robots doing. We can see a picture, see a video. So the underground is uh, sometimes is very mysterious to a lot of people. Actually, this is a normal sewer pipe. In Shenzhen, there is 2,000, no, 2,000, 20,000, uh, 25, 25,000 kilometers underground sewer pipe in this city, in Shenzhen. But lots of them have a lot of flawness. So we can see there is maybe the road is have a <coughs> very big disaster. People and car just fall into the road because there is the pipe is broken. Yeah, there is a lot of disaster based on the underground facilities not doing well. So my point is that uh, in today's case, also in today's China, we cannot just focus on the, you know, focus on the structure, the building, on the road. We need to fo we need to pull our energy, or we need to see something happen on the underground facility. This is uh, very important to everybody's life. <coughs> so thank you. Thank you, everybody. <coughs>